Welcome. That's what I've got so far. The anticip like uh, everyone who clicked into this video was expecting and anticipating an intro. But expectations are the birthplace of resentment. <sighs> Start off with a quote. Start like you mean to go on. That's solid, to be fair. <laughs> Uh, welcome everybody. We are doing a, a short video. Well, will it be short? We shall see. Um, but we're doing it about quotes. And the reason we're doing it about quotes is because we're into quotes. We know others. I had a flashback actually of, do you remember the wall in the quote wall in high res in the youth center? Yeah. Where we, we in the in the corridor, we drew a wall on a wall and everyone could pick a a brick and write their own quote which reminds me someone actually sent me a message when we said we were going to do a quote version an old b weller i wonder can you guess who it is who said the only quote we all ever need is life is a roller coaster just gotta ride it from our bex taylor absolute legend shout out when i said listen we'll get you on someday and you can just read out the lyrics of that song it's all we need <laughs> Yes, there's no point trying to get Ronan on because <coughs> Bex will be far superior as a guest, let's be honest. Um so yeah, we like we like who yeah, I don't know, people who aren't into quotes, but maybe there are people who aren't into quotes. I did a little bit of looking at what why why are quotes um something that yeah. people are drawn to? Um and it was like three key things that came out uh, like from my own research. One is the that quotes can be motivational or inspirational. So they can be a driver. They can tap into uh, something where if you are, if there's someone you admire or if, or you're trying to do something, a quote can be a driving force to, to help either get you back on track or get you going beyond where you think you might be able to go. Um, the second one is interesting because it's about the, the power of language. Mm. that quotes in their nature and um, when language is used in such a way you can almost tell a story in one or two lines um, which is is beautiful um, and then the other one is kind of about like that we are aspirational creatures and that we um, like between sometimes the people that we admire we want to tap into their wisdom and their energy and their thinking and we want to align with it in some way or another and sometimes that happens in both ways i would say that you you're you connect with the quote of someone who you admire or you start admiring someone whose quote you come Yay. across and you just discover more about them so the origin of course so tell us you you created the task so explain it well, because I have like quotes everywhere. Like I have a whiteboard here beside me and when I see a really good one, I'll write it down. Or with the new iOS update, I eventually figured out how to put little quote banners. Um, I will, I'll give you one guess on what person I have currently on my screensaver. Does it begin with B in the first name and begin with B in the second? <laughs> Yes, it is Brene Brown. Although none of the quotes that I've picked today are, I ch challenged myself to not use a Brene Brown quote. Um, but yeah, and I think it's like, um, they're almost like little reminders. So um, I, I think it, it, some of the quotes even that I was looking at for today's challenge, like there's a page or two in a book that explains what they mean. And once you've read those page or two, you don't have time always to pick up the two pages and read two full pages, but the one or two liners will just remind you of, of the lesson um and i think rarely is a quote like we don't get quotes from people who've never had struggle or never had like good quotes come from those very moments that you might be in currently and it's from someone who's maybe further on down the path or made it through uh so i find them they can be quite they can be very helpful and they can be funny they can be like lighthearted. they can be serious and that's why today i, I we tried to theme them um, based on, well, I won't, I won't say, but I'll, I'll, I want to ask you, Daisy, maybe to start with, give us, if you can, a quote that makes you smile. So um, the, my, the quote I'm going to use is this one, and I don't know, maybe I should have put the effort in to 
see who owns this quote. Um, but this quote always makes me smile. It's kind of a cheeky smile as well, which is okay, I hope. Um, mm -hmm. But the quote is, I am not responsible for the version of me that lives inside your head. And it's and why it makes me smile, I guess, is that sometimes, yeah, you live inside other people's head, especially, I suppose, if they have, for whatever reason, they have negative thoughts and vibes about you. And I am not in control of what motivates someone to have negative thoughts or vibes about me inside their head. And that could be a fleeting thing and that's grand, but if someone has a deep, uh, if I live inside their head and, it, and it's causing negativity, um, it kind of makes me smile to think that like, I'm not responsible for that version of me. Um, but if you want to get to know me, uh, spend some time with me. Uh, well, that's my, I, like that. my quote I, I almost that. imagine like a tiny little person running around somebody else's head. Can you imagine how wild the little grace in someone's head would be just like making loud noise? <laughs> that makes me smile too. I really like it. Uh, what have you got? The one I have is a paraphrase, I think. So it's actually alleged that she never said it in these many words, but it's if I can't dance, then it's not my revolution. And why it makes me smile is that the whole idea of it is is that so let's say a revolution is something so serious and meaningful and with a purpose a deeply human purpose of making things different and better in this case so emma goldman was um as far as i know i don't know much better but a socialist revolutionary feminist trying to strive for equality um and what she meant by if I can't dance was if I can't be myself, if I can't contribute who I am to the revolution, then I don't belong in that revolution. But the reason it makes me smile is because it actually for me means like if you can't have joy while you're doing the most meaningful work, then I don't want to be a part of it. And I think we sometimes get caught in whether it's, you know, activism around making the world a better place, whether it's doing chores in your own home, whether it's going to work nine to five the serious things that we have to do in our life you can still dance if you if you feel like it and you want a bit of joy and that's okay and that's okay to be a part of so that always makes me makes me smile cool good choice it's actually it reminds me of, there was a, of a question i asked i was watching on saturday morning a group of young activists who are involved in the migrant rights center of Ireland and they're called YPP, Young, Paperless and Powerful. And they were sharing the story of what it means to be undocumented in Ireland, which is inconceivable, I think, for the average person to realize that if you are not document documented and don't have documents to prove your existence, then you are invisible. And uh, there are lots of barriers to that. And they've been campaigning and they are young activists. And um, there's lots of people in that situation in Ireland uh, who may have arrived here as children and are now adults and it's everything from transitioning from secondary school to college and not having again status and um, to be able to get grants or but anyway what the question i asked them at their event yesterday was how important is it to have laughter and jokes along the way and you could see even in the reaction that they despite the serious serious content um on the issue that they, they yeah I, I, they definitely place a value on dancing. And do you know where, and actually before I say what I'm going to say, where can people watch that if they, if they is it online? To watch that will that? be on, yeah, it's on YouTube. And it's, uh, if you go into the National Youth Council of Ireland, NYCI, their YouTube channel, uh, yeah. you'll find it there. It's amazing, amazing. Yeah. It reminds me of, well, I don't know. I think it's a universal thing, but maybe it's an Irish thing. What do we do even at funerals? When we're grieving we sing actually and i know it's a universal thing because i've seen other cultures do it too where singing music and dancing even in grief is something that we do to honor and that's that's such a like whew, like chilling example of if i can't dance it's not my my revolution give us your second one then so this is on the theme of a quote that gave me wisdom and it's by John Kabat-Zinn and it's you can't stop the waves but you can learn to surf and it's so frustrating because it's so true and it's so hard so 
uh, it comes from, I can't remember what, well, I have one of his books here <clears throat> called Full Catastrophe Living, just a light read. <laughs> just, uh, I have it also above me on my shelf. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that's the only book of his I have, but um, it's like the, it's like the series collected all together. Um, and so John Kabat-Zinn is a mindfulness teacher and um, he does the mindfulness-based stress reduction eight-week program with people who have all sorts of serious illnesses. Um, but he also writes about, and the, the book is a great title, like Full Catastrophe Living. So he's not talking about meditating to relieve stress as such. He's talking about surfing the waves of life. So why, why this gave me wisdom is, okay, the first part, you can't stop the waves. And how much do we, how much time do we spend trying to resist what is that we don't have control over? Um, I know, especially for someone like me, who's like a little bit of a control freak, I will try so hard to influence things before I accept that they're happening. Um, but the second part is just so hopeful because it's saying you can control something and that's yourself and you can learn to surf the waves and it's kind of like all the stuff that we talk about in be well is like learning all the tools that work for you and choosing the right tool in the right moment and exploring with that um and so for me that's just so wise because it's that perfect balance between acceptance but also managing and react responding rather than re reacting um so very wisdomous but also really hard to <laughs> put in practice sometimes cool. oh, yeah yeah, and it kind of makes me think about that, like the that's there's you can maintain momentum, you know, mm -hmm. that surfing is movement. So there's no kind of checking out or stepping off or pressing stop. That, and uh, there's a risk maybe in that. But yeah, my, my next one. So the challenge. Um, oh, well, now where, where is this one so I can take it off? While you're finding it, I'll tell you a story about when I went surfing before in fourth year and I finally got to stand on the board and I was like, I'm doing it, I'm doing it. And my PE teacher pushed me off. <laughs> I was like, wow. all right, thanks. Reality check. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so quote of wisdom, it's like mm. hard. How do you this for you to choose, yeah. <laughs> so it kind of, if I was narrowing it down, it was, it was down to two people, but in the end, this was my choice. So this is from someone who is very, very inspirational for me, uh, Audrey Lord. Uh, like, if I was to start explaining, go and Google her because it's worth your while. Uh, but she is like an amazing. She was amazing activist, feminist, um, political commentator, like radical legend um but this one really sticks with me often and like in every conversation that we have even about politics and change um and how we want the world to you know like how we want to move towards the world being a better place <clears throat> i think this quote it always serves us well in terms of wisdom because as she says there's no such thing as a single issue struggle because we do not live single issue lives and i know that for some people they're drawn to a certain struggle or a certain issue. Um, and that's their, maybe a priority on their agenda or, or like that. It's something that they have lived experience of and that's, but it's so, so important to see the relationships and the connections um, between how we live our lives and how we relate them to issues and struggles and change um, that's required for the world to be a better place. And um, so whether it's, you know, ignoring can we can we talk about climate justice without talking about social justice or racial justice? Um, so yeah, it's a really a strong quote for me in terms of wisdom. And it, that like reminds me of one of my. It's actually the name of one of her books, which is her it, "Your Silence Will Not Protect You," which again is so wisdomous because what she's saying is don't think you're protecting yourself by you know those moments where you're like oh, I won't speak up because it doesn't protect you anyway. And so you might as well go for it. And that's so comforting in a weird way, because you're like, all right, you know, if you like hurt yourself and you could have prevented it, you're like, that's frustrating. Whereas she's saying you can't prevent it. So go for it. And uh, no, she's not good. Legend, Laurie. And the final category of 
quotes that we were like imagine we had just gone free for all and we could have just shared all the quotes that we have and i have some in my head that i'm probably going to say at the end anyway um but to challenge ourselves a quote for 2020 daisy what did you come up with this is my quote for 2020 <clears throat> so it's from uh, john o'donoghue and it is may you take time to celebrate the quiet miracles that seek no attention and John O'Donoghue, a very interesting dude for me. And uh, I always, I love the fact that there's such a contrast between him because he's quite a religious guy. Um, but I would call him very spiritual and he's really, yeah, where we align is his interest in Celtic, all things Celtic. But yeah, I, I love his, uh, his poetry and his writing is just so wonderful. Um, and it's so easy to connect with. Um, but yeah, this to me is about kind of, yeah, like really seeing and saying that there are quite like, so I could get all fluffy here and say that I could like the smile of my children is a quiet miracle that they could be asleep. They could be, I could be watching them from across the room. Uh, I could be, or I could be looking out the window at the one little daisy that's decided to bloom in my back garden and they're there, the little miracles are there. They, they're they not asking you to give them your attention. And I think in uh, you know what we would describe as the attention economy out there in the world where everything is seeking your attention and it's so easy to get drawn into that, especially in the online space. Um, and the pandemic has taken our attention and it's kind of front loaded in everything that we do and, and uh, probably a lot of our thoughts on the daily. But I think there are like, it's it's really grounding for me to remind myself to celebrate the, the choir miracles that's you no know, attention and i like that because it's 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 like um a gratitude practice but not yeah. quite so much because it is and it isn't so it is it is gratitude but it's a little bit more than that because it's not saying take five minutes at the end of the day to think about the good things which is a good thing to do but it's it's putting the magic in it almost like like you say like that one daisy like how has that decided to like um and that's quite exciting that's quite mysterious and in a time when mysterious things are at the moment like when we don't know hang on series just come on and listen to me that's obvious um but when when things uncertain things are so scary the mystery of the positives that's what that quote like kind of feels like so it makes total sense that he's very celtic vibes as well i think i have his book inside but i haven't started it yet Give us your one for 2020. So mine is hope is the embrace of the unknown. And it's from this book called Hope in the Dark by Rebecca Solnit, I'm going to say. Um, and actually, it's nice because I have. So this bookmark is actually a card that a friend of mine wrote who uh, orange is our color. And so I use it as my bookmark as a tiny little bit of a reminder of joy she writes letters to me which i love rather than texts but so hope is an embrace of the unknown right for 2020 how hard is that because we like this is not only do some of us not know like this is unknown for our entire species we were none of us were alive for the last one so we're all just like what is going on and there's nowhere well, there is places to look in fairness, like the World Health Organization or just like we're all trying our best to share what we know. But it's hard, I think, to be hopeful because we can't. I think in normal challenges, we look to the people who've walked that road before and say, well, look, they got through and this is what happened in the end. And that's fine. But in this, we don't have that. And so for 2020, this quote was just like. Um, and although I said I wasn't going to reference Brene Brown, I'm going to in her book she says that hope is a, is a discipline and that kind of ties in with this because it's uh, like I don't think we mistakenly often say I feel hopeful or I feel hopeless but that's a descriptor and that's grand but but if hope is a discipline and it's an embrace of the unknown then there's work involved which can which is positive because it means you can have influence on how hopeful you are and don't get me wrong like it's really really hard to do that and when I look at this quote and embracing the unknown, yeah, it goes back to all of those other p points of learning that we've been talking about, like accepting, managing yourself, responding, surfing the waves. Um, 
but I think it's 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 only however many words in that quote, but it's a like almost a mission giver for 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 this year, you know. Very good. Very good. <laughs> And I have, <laughs> no, I was going to say I have another one that I don't even I haven't even sent to you to type out because it's what is on my board that I think sums up the whole be well interpret in times that we're trying to do. And I actually don't even know who said it, but it's that pain that is not transformed will always be transmitted. And I think that that's what we're trying to do at the moment is that it's not to say there is no pain or challenges but that we're trying to transform it into something else and i think that's a a nice little framer <laughs> sneaky little extra quote in the mix there I'm, I'm, I'm curiously thinking of how i can add one of my um sneaky ones although like, there is yeah there's there's one that i use um that like does this fit i don't know but Oh, that does. I'm going to make it fit. But there's one that I really like, and I use it with my students every year um, when we start off in Liberties College. And it's the uh, one that says, We are all failures. At least the best of us are. Oh, and wow. I just love the way it kind of challenges, like at the beginning, you're, it's just almost a cognitive dissonance in it about saying, mm -hmm. We are all failures. At least the best of us are. And it's just uh, that recognition that. Yeah, failure is a tool and it's something that we can learn from and i think again in the current turbulent times um there's it's recognizing trying and maybe failing and trying again um, but not quitting um is important and there isn't a perfect way to manage this un unprecedented unusual scenario um but to not try and to not uh, maybe even yeah frame frame your trying in a positive and intentional way, then you're on the right track. Uh, but it's it's okay, I suppose, to to fail along the way. It's like it's so cool, isn't it? Like even just we've only talked for twenty minutes on like what people have said, but that you just yeah. And I think what's interesting is sometimes these quotes you don't see all the years of struggle and work and learning that have gone into those one or two lines. But you can feel it when you stop and think like it would be if I was to try and come up with a quote now that's quotable and relatable. I just, <laughs> I don't know. Like, although I'm sure I could think of a fair few quotes from you, Daisy, that we could use. But like it's 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 so lovely to it's like it's like a, a gift that people wise people give us who've been through their own stuff and they're sharing their their learning. So, yeah, like and like you were saying at the start, like I think they do like on social media now and stuff, we see nice graphics with the quotes or it, with, but like, I love when someone sends me one they think I'll like, or, you know, like I said, I have it on my phone. So you can like keep it somewhere or writing it on a whiteboard or even on a little post-it. I just think they're a nice little tool to, they're like little reminders for, to jog your own wisdom when you need it. And I think, yeah, like there's also the whole world of quotes in other languages, like, you know, whether that's our own, whether Irish, like, mm -hmm. or Spanish, I have a little bit of access to, to that and that, that there's a world of quotes and expressions and nuggets of wisdom that are carried through culture, which I think are valuable as well and yeah. precious um, for others. So what's, the, what's, what's your favorite, my Irish wife I have? Niniart Kukur Lakela, I guess, is yeah. another is a powerful Irish one. I'm sure there's a million others. Well, um, Hintan Mar the Hintan Fain, which is like there's no like fireplace like your own, but there's no place like home. Mm. Well. Like class. Che Guevara, hasta la victoria siempre. <laughs> and actually, that's a good point because how many quotes are passed down through generations and become kind of like informal rules or like, you know, just in little. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Like it's so cool. That's um does everyone put quotes down the bottom of their email like the way I do? And it's so hard to choose one. I'm like, oh, there's so many. <laughs> yeah, I have my my one is be well is at the bottom of mine, I'm really sure. Is it? It's, it's not the tough times that define us, it's how we handle those tough times. I think mine is still what you know matters, but who you are matters more. Savage. Like 
so good. I used so, that in so many presentations at the start of so many presentations. But it's so because it just like invites you to again, like you could remember a whole encyclopedia, but who you are is so much more vibrant, and we want to know about that much more than what you can remember from a, a book. Be yourself. Everyone else has already taken Oscar Wilde. <laughs> You see, like I knew we would go down to the rabbit hole, and then we would. Be... <laughs> if oh, there's another. If you're gonna fight an alligator, don't fight them in a swamp. Don't know who said it. Choose your territory wisely. No, so if if people have good quotes, send them on to us. Me and Daisy always love reading a good quote. Share the quotes, lads. Yes. So we hope you got something out of out of this or maybe even you might go and under the teens go and find what you would like it was such a hard challenge for me to like okay well what makes me smile or what gives me wisdom but it's a nice way to to frame it and I went back over my old books even to see which was nice in itself um and I practice to do and it's nice to put to sometimes find a quote and see the context the context of it like in because they are extractions of probably a, a deeper or more substantial piece of writing or or a speech or something so it's there's even more to be got from going and discovering what, what did they say next what did they say before that and that's yeah, that's what i spent my whole sunday doing there's books everywhere on my table but we hope that you guys watching got something out of it and as we say like share it with us or go explore yourself and thank you for giving us your time